Yo, it's Arcade. Today we're gonna make EDM that goes like mm, 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 mm. Melbourne Bounce, I think it's called. So let's get to it. Also, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. More on that later. So I think we get started with the drums. Then we add the offbeat bass and stuff like that. So the drums kick in a nice pre-shifted clap for sure. Okay, this one sounds nice. So let's add it in. And then we're gonna choose a pre-shifted clap. Maybe this one, put it in the playlist, zoom in and make sure it lines up with the second kick. So I'm not sure where the start is exactly. So we're gonna preview it. And then duplicate it by holding shift and dragging it with your mouse. And I'm gonna adjust the in. So it's a bit more subtle, but I'm gonna add another clap, which will be a regular clap. Maybe this juicy one. It's also a little bit pre-shifted though, but that's okay. Then we're gonna add an open hi-hat. Just like this. And we can differentiate between different panning as well, a little bit, to add more stereo into the whole song, you know. Let's see if we can choose a different open hi-hat. Yeah, I think I like this one better. Okay, so the drums are pretty much ready. Let's see if we can sneak in loop in there, maybe shaker. Change the VPN to 128 and let's see. Yeah, I think we can sneak it in just in the background. And then our drum loop is officially ready. Now let's move on to the bass. I think I'm gonna use Nexus for it. Maybe this punch bass. Let's see if we can use that one. So all you have to do here is just make sure it's offbeat. So you choose your key, for example, G, and you put a note right here. Let's skip two of these. And then just go like this. Three spaces in between, and you have your offbeat bass. Let's hear how it sounds. Okay, so it's way too loud right off the bat. The kick and the bass should be about the same volume. So let's actually check the volume. So I'm gonna go to master channel. I'm gonna add Wave Candy. So this is your pro tip for mixing. And just change the preset here to peak meter. So you have this decibel meter and you can see the volume of each sound. Then we're gonna just solo the kick by right clicking on the track, on the track circle here. And let's see how many decibels it reaches. So minus nine. So we can definitely make the kick louder. Minus seven is good. And then the bass. About minus seven now. So we can check the other sounds as well now. Okay, the claps are about minus seven together. So that's good. Maybe the hi-hats need to be louder a little bit. Shakers are fine. So let's hear it now. Oh yeah, huge difference. Just like changing the volume makes a big difference. So make sure to always do that. Check your volumes and mess with them. That's like the number one mixing tip I can give you. So right off the bat, we have a pretty cool beat here. Not much happening melodically, but it's cool. So now let's add some effects. Before we add the melody, let's do some effects. So for effects, obviously you want white noise, like exhaust, for example, change the in so it doesn't start as abruptly and lower the volume. Let's put this one key higher, which is G sharp by holding shift and arrows. You know, you can move the notes up or down. So I want it on G sharp because my kick is on G sharp. So it should be the same, not always, but usually it's the best if you keep it in the same key. So let's take this exhaust, click on this little icon here and make unique, double click it, reverse it. Now we also have a reverse sweep as well. You know, that it connects nicely to the original one because it's the same one, just reversed. Now let's check some more effects like stabs. Like this brass hit, let's add it in. But I am also gonna put it on a separate track and create a new track called SD, like sidechain. It's gonna be track number seven 
I'm going to put Kickstart plugin on there, which is a sign chain plugin. If you want to do this without the Kickstart plugin, you can also use Fruity Law Filter and you can set up the sign chaining in here. I have some presets like this that will help you do that. You know, it's pretty much the same. You can watch my tutorial on sign chaining with Law Filter, link below. But I'm going to use Kickstart because I just like it the best. The brass is going to be sign chained. So to get that effect on the brass, we have it on mixer track number six. So while the mixer track number six is selected, we go under mixer track number seven, which is the sign chain. We right click it and choose root to this track only. That means the brass, we can put effects on it here but it is also affected by the effects on channel number seven, which is the Kickstart plugin. So one effect I want to put on the brass separately is reverb. Just put it in there and leave it like this. So now it sounds like this. Let's see if we can reverse it as well. Do a little effect there. I don't know. Yeah, sure. Sounds good. So yeah, we have a really nice bass for the song ready to go. Now we might add more effects later, but now let's move on to the melody. But before we do, if you would like to learn more about music production and take your skills to the next level, then I believe you would like to hear about our sponsor today, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is a platform where you can learn a wide variety of skills, but I think you and I are most interested in music. There are tons of classes on music production and music theory that explain everything in detail. For example, I learned how to play jazz on a piano thanks to this class by Ali Abdal. It was actually a lot of fun to watch, but if piano is not your thing and you want to learn more about, for example, FL Studio, you can just search for it, FL Studio, and you'll have tons of classes about FL Studio. Right now, I would recommend this one by Riley Weller, FL Studio 20 Beginners Course, learn how to make beats in FL Studio. In this FL Studio course, you'll learn pretty much everything you need to start properly producing music. Even I learned a lot of new tips and tricks in FL Studio that I didn't know before, like how to properly use automation clips by watching this lesson on automation clips. But the best thing for you is that you can now take this course for free by using the link in my description box. You'll also receive unlimited access to tens of thousands additional classes for a whole month. So check it out, link is below in the description. And now let's get back to the video. And we are back, now let's move on to the melody. Okay, so I have this prepared already because it's been a struggle with the melodies. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it. So we're gonna have two melodies. The first one is in the first repetition of the drop and the second one is in the second. So for the first one, I chose this sound. From Nexus and I put some effects on it like EQ because it was a bit too harsh so I removed some of the frequencies and of course remove the low frequencies because you don't really need them in the melody sound and by removing them you're gonna create some more space in the whole mix. Then we have some reverb and then I even put sound glitter on it just for good measure. So that's our first layer of the sound and here is the melody itself. So when it comes to making melody well obviously you want to stay in the key of your bass which was G sharp and an important thing when making melody is to have some sort of a resolution. So you can see we sort of repeat the same idea three times even though with some variations. So this one repeats here and here, and then this is the resolution. So this one is just one note all the time, but with a different rhythm, and that lets the listener know that it's the end of the melody. And then it sort of repeats seamlessly. So make sure to always like start with something, but then end with some resolution in the melody, so the listener knows that is the end of the repetition. As far as the rhythm and the melody goes, it's a really simple one, as you can see. I also like to add some shorter notes like this one. You do that by holding the Alt key and shortening the note, so it doesn't snap to the grid. You can also do triplets by choosing one third beat. As you can see at the end here, I have some triplets. So when you choose one third beat, then you just add notes like this and it will be triplets because if you go back to your original line, you can see they are sort of offbeat. So that's some of the things to keep in mind when making Melbourne Bounce melodies. You want this groove, you want this swing in there. A lot of it is about the rhythm. So this is my first layer of the melody. The second layer is this sound, Epic Pluck. which is more of a plucky layer. But we also have a third layer, which is like an old school tip that I learned way back. And that is this white noise layer. So we just have this. So it is also sign chained. We thought it just sounds like this. 
Basically, it is the same melody, same rhythm, but only with a clicky white noise sound. So to make this sound, basically you go to three times oscillator in FL Studio. You change all of these to the random one, and then you go to envelope. You enable the envelope, you lower everything except the decay. You turn on the decay a little bit, so it's a clicky sound. You can also mess with the mod X and Y and change the filter to sort of change the color of the white noise. So with that, it sounds like this. But again, that adds to the power of the whole sound. So in the mix, it sounds like this. And that is our first melody in the first repetition of the drop. In the second one, we use the same melody, but different sounds. So for the second one, I went with the more classic Melbourne Bounce lead. More of a buzz lead. Same effects on this one as well. If you are deciding what frequencies you want to remove from your sound, just make sure to move this around while listening to the song or to the sound. And then whenever you like what you hear, you just keep it there. So again, the same melody with one difference, which is I put these starter notes, which were like this, I put them octave lower. Another tip with the melodies that I can give you is the length of the notes makes a big difference. So just making different length notes makes a big difference. For example, if we shorten these, it's a whole different than if we have this. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? But a lot of people forget about that. They just keep the notes the same length. Make sure to differentiate between different lengths. So we have that melody and another layer is this one. Now, what do you notice about this one is that I deleted the starter notes and I did this to sort of highlight certain notes. So as you can see in here, we have these notes, but in the other melody, we don't have them. That means these notes will be highlighted in the whole song. So when we play it together, this sort of works with that. So yeah, I use that layer to sort of highlight the notes that I like the most, that I want to be the most obvious in the mix. And that is the melody. Also, I did change the bass melody. In the first repetition, it's just this one note, G sharp. But in the second repetition, we also have a little bit of a bass line melody here. So yeah, just switching between different notes to make it more interesting. That way you let the listener know that the song is progressing. So all together, it sounds like this. And there we have it, that's the melody. Now let's add some more effects. So as you can see at the end of each repetition, there is some empty space. So I wanna add some fills in here. So here's the fill I went with. But I think I'm gonna add one more, like a synth fill. Yeah, something like this, you know, a synth fill. This one is in G minor, so I pitched it up by 100 cents to reach G sharp. Really simple calculation there. So now a few more effects that I added is some crashes. You know, we have the exhausts, but also some crashes. Just to have the initial drop hit hit harder. And then I also added this effect, which is like vocal energy booster. I think you could also add some drop claps, which would have a similar effect, but I liked this better. It's more subtle. I also added some rides. You want to add all of these things in the second drop so the energy sort of builds up, you know. You don't want to add everything in the first one because then there is nothing to look forward to. So you want to add this in the second repetition of the drop. And I also added this up sweep. So with all the effects. So again, this is just building up the tension in the whole drop. And the last thing that I added is some white noise, but this one is actually pretty important. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. So I created my own white noise with three times oscillator. It sounds like this. 
So again, really simple, just change all of these to the random one and then go to envelope slash instrument settings and play with the filter. So yeah, the filter makes a whole lot of difference and you sort of wanna adjust it until you get some frequencies that work the best with the whole song. So this is what I ended up with. But again, you can move this around for different results. And this is sort of gonna fill out some of the space in the drop that is not filled up. So again, make sure the color of this white noise is what fits the best in the whole mix. You can also adjust it with EQ like I did here. So as you can see, I boosted some of these frequencies because that's what I think the mix is missing. So I sort of added it with the white noise. So that's another pro tip that you can use. If your drop is lacking some energy, just add some white noise and boost some of the frequencies that you think are missing in the drop. And once again, this white noise is sign chained. This time I used the low filter. You can check my video on how to do this, link below. And that is pretty much it for all the effects, melodies and everything. The last thing is the arrangement. But as you can see here at the beginning, we only have the kick and the bass. Then later we add the claps, the shakers and the hi-hats. And then in the second drop, full drop, we add the rides as well. And all these other sounds. And that is pretty much it. That's our song ready to go. So now let's color it by selecting the first pattern, then holding shift, selecting the last pattern, right click, rename and color and choose your colors. I'm gonna go with red and blue. The song is ready. Let's have a listen to the finished result. And that is pretty much it guys, thank you for watching, make sure to get the free trial of Skillshare and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!